Hey guys, Quick the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. So today I am with my car because I want to transform this car into a camper. Well, not quite. I just want to be able to sleep in the car comfortably. Um, and uh, it, uh, this car is actually a Nissan Leaf. Uh, it is a 62 kilowatt hour battery version. So it's an electric car with a huge uh, battery inside which means that for powering equipment, whether it's a telescope or an electric blanket or whatever, it's great. It also means that I can leave like the air conditioning working throughout the night or the heating working throughout the night, which is perfect because that's exactly the kind of stuff that I want to do. The problem is that it's absolutely not made for uh, sleeping in the car. One example, if I put the seats down there, uh, down there, not quite flat, even there. And there's not a lot of space between like the uh, trunk of the car and then the front passenger seat, even if you like push the seat forward, but there's just enough. And I was like taking measurements to see whether I could build a frame to try and basically harmonize the height uh, here at the trunk level and uh, at the seat level down there to be able to have a, a bed and then I looked online and I found that there is a vendor in Japan only that uh, provides like a custom-made frame uh, <laughs> to actually install a bed in your uh, Nissan Leaf. How awesome is that? And so with that I should be able to go to dark spots for astrophotography but also for my other hobby which is paragliding and uh, and basically sleep in the car and you know do some astrophotography while I'm sleeping and then some flying during the day afterwards which would be absolutely amazing um, and I also want to like customize um, a small house that there is on my uh, paragliding school grounds to be able to use as an office during the day because that would be awesome now the, the kit itself comes with like uh, planks of wood like this that are um, hopefully hopefully uh, as strong and sturdy enough to basically carry a person or a person lying down and it comes with like massive uh, metal struts to basically carry the frame of the bed is it going to work no idea <laughs> are there any instructions that come with it absolutely not <laughs> so this is going to be fun for me um, let's see how it goes I was wrong, it comes with instructions. Awesome, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, they even have like uh, letters on the, uh, on the metal frame. So hopefully it's uh, gonna work. I had, I need um, a wrench, five millimeter hexagonal wrench to make this work so i'll go and uh and get this the <laughs> first thing so let me get this and then i'll be back and here i have all of my uh hex um wrenches in both units that make sense and units that don't make sense and i do have the five millimeter here oh, that's short hopefully it's gonna work okay let me get down to work <sighs> Okay, this is starting to look like a frame. It's uh, the instructions really assume that you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Hopefully, it will turn out okay. Okay, we're done with like the first part of the frame. Uh, I have no mechanical bone in my, in my body, and I'm thoroughly impressed by how those kind of joints work. It's like the moment you tighten them, they will actually tighten across this bar there and the other bar as well. It's it's almost like magic. It's like Oh my word, like people who are good at mechanics, seriously, my hat's off to you. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Taking shape, it's in there. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of problem. The middle foot there um, and the one there at the back as well, they're floating. I can put my finger underneath, for instance. So I feel like they should be contacting the ground. Uh, because of that, on this little piece, I kind of loosened it to basically slide it down one centimeter or so so it, it has at least some contact with the ground and I'll probably put like some paper or something underneath to make sure it uh, it does um, 
what do you guys think? Should I uh, fully um, insert basically the, the, the rod into the structure or is it okay to have it like one centimeter, no, actually not even one centimeter, like seven millimeters roughly uh, out? I have no idea. <laughs> if anyone knows, let me know. <laughs> guys, look at this, it's actually taking shape. <laughs> we have the back uh, cage here and then it's going all the way forward to the uh, front left seat, so the uh, passenger uh, seat, because yes, we're driving on the left here. Um, and it seems to be more or less stable. Uh, the only thing, the only integration that I have is about like those joints here. Is it okay for me to like kind of slide them by more than half a centimeter? It seems to be stable enough. So it looks okay for now. Uh, also, the good thing is I think I'll need to remove that for the car inspection that's actually coming in December, uh, but it should be like a 20 minute job max to actually remove everything from the car, uh, which is good. And once I put on the, um, the, the actual bed kind of slabs, I'll see uh, whether, because <laughs> that was the suspense of whether my wife will be able to sit in front as well. That could be fairly important. <laughs> We shall see. And here is the completed uh, bed, I think, <laughs> hopefully. So it's very interesting because in the, in the instructions uh, about those like slabs on top, uh, what do they say? They say, <laughs> Uh, using a method, some method, uh, please make sure to um, make them fit together well and so that they don't move around. Um, uh, yeah, sure, uh, what method? <laughs> Would have been nice to include some ideas? I have absolutely no idea. Now, the one thing that I know is that the, the big slab that's at the front, it's easy to take off and once I take it off, I'm actually able to recline and put back the uh, pass passenger seat at the front, which is perfect uh, because that means I can actually use uh, that uh, passenger seat. So even with that, at any time I can remove just the front um, board, uh, not the front frame, the front board, uh, put it somewhere else, like outside the car, whatever, um, or like leave it in this garage here, and then I can just like recline the seat, which makes this a three-seated car plus one bed. Let's see if I can fit fit in that bed. Well, I gotta say it's tight. There's not a lot of, lot of overhead space, and I think uh, that um, in normal use my feet would be there, and uh, my head would be the other way. Uh, but another test, very important, will be to see whether I can actually close. <laughs> my trunk because if that doesn't work we're in trouble okay <laughs> it's kind of working i think it's gonna work i think it's gonna be fine let's see let's see how it actually looks like inside okay i'm now sitting in the back seat of the car everything's uh fine uh, i have like a new armrest <laughs> here in the middle uh, so it does mean that yeah three people up to, up to three people can use this while I have the frame uh, here in the middle my seat belt works fine okay so passenger is okay and the next step will be to see if I can actually lie down comfortably with my head this direction and see if it works well looks like looks like it's working perfectly fine Let's see if I can get my whole body length. Yeah, I fit. I fit, guys. This is so cool. Oh, man. Yeah, this isn't bad. This isn't half bad. This isn't bad at all. So I could have basically the heater or the cooler down there working and just be sleeping in there. It's a tight fit, but for like, not every day, right? But from time to time, I think this can work uh, great. So now what I need to do is find some way to keep those uh, slabs there from like moving around because they do have a propensity to kind of move around and I need to be able to fit uh, my paragliding equipment and my astrophotography equipment. So we'll see how that goes. Another piece of the puzzle. 
that I've ordered is this. And this is uh, basically window covers that are specifically for the leaf um, that have suction cups so I can actually darken out uh, the windows, which would be great. Uh, and that will let me hopefully uh, more or less sleep in peace wherever I have my uh, car parked. And I can store these things easily under the boards. And can I fit in my paragliding equipment? So I have here one of my paragliding sets. This is for pure hike and fly, very lightweight equipment. I have here a second set, which is for thermaling, for really flying for a long time, using rising columns of air to really get up and up. Can I fit those very well in the trunk? Let's have a look. Well, it's a bit of a tight fit, but they actually go without too much, too many issues under the frame there. So it looks great. And I even have more space there for a little bit of paragliding equipment, which are kind of where I could put it on top of here. Uh, so now I need to find a mat, uh, something that I can actually sleep on. And the uh, dimensions that I have it's fairly broad from here to from from here to there, but uh, I also have to take into account like the curve here at the back. So I think I want a width of just 60, milli uh, 60 centimeters, which is not that bad. But you know it needs to be uh, it needs to be taken into account. So <laughs> those are the next uh, pieces of the puzzle that I will that I will look into. Okay, I think this is quite enough for a video uh, about how I am uh, retrofitting my car, which is a bit insane. Uh, we'll see how well that works. Uh, fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, I'll keep you up to date. Uh, always that, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you're interested in my astro and para adventures, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe, like button, etc., etc., etc. And uh, more importantly, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.